All right, we're recording. Okay. Okay, so we'll get Brooks one more time. He should be a pro. Okay. <laughs> charm, right? Okay, so third time's the charm, and you actually have this down pat. Now you ask me the questions. You know, <laughs> you know the drill now. So <laughs> one more time, we're just going to start out your name and just kind of everything that we've talked about. Go ahead and get started. All right. I'm um, Brooks Najanko, and uh, live in Prairie Team. Grew up here. Lived here my whole life. Um, worked for Mike Valley for about 13 years, <clears throat> on and off, part time and stuff. But um, after got out of well, my senior year of my high school, senior year of high school, I uh, that's when I kind of went part time or whatever. And went on my own, bought my own boat and that and stuff. And just kind of went fishing on my own and still sell fish to Mike, you know, daily and help him out when he needs it. So tell me a little bit about Brooks. Like, what, what, when you say you went fishing on your own, tell me what you fish and, and some of the challenges that go along with that. Mostly fish, uh, carp, buffalo, and catfish and all the challenges that go along with it the weather is the one of the main ordeals um, you really got to watch watch your weather if, you know if you get a 10 to 15 mile an hour south wind around here it's, you know it gets pretty wavy out on the river so you don't want to be out there to with a boatload of fish and sink Tell me about what happens if, tell me about if, you know, you do get caught in that situation, what, what happens? Well, if you do get caught in that situation, you better be heading there for sure, because you will sink. <laughs> and done that once, not because of the wind, but because of the waves. And we're headed back to the boat landing once, and we got caught into a wave, a big boat came flying within 5, 10 feet from us. And we hit the first wave, rode that out fine, and then we we came down, we hit the second one, and right into it, and right down under we went. <laughs> and lost so all the fish, lost all of our gear, had to dive dive the boat back up and have it pulled out with the big truck. And so tell me about losing all of the fish and all of the gear. What does that mean to you financially? Well, the fish were worth about six hundred dollars, so you lost, you know, your daily's wage, or well, day and a half's wage, you know, in about fifteen seconds. And then all the gear, you know, your your boat motor gets wet, you know, if you don't get it taken care of right away, you know, drain all the water out and change the oils and stuff like that, you know, it could be junk. That you're looking at six, seven thousand dollars for a new boat motor. And so, and do, do losses like that put commercial fishermen out of business? Oh yeah, yep, yep. I mean, if you got a, if you're small, you know, just a smaller guy, and you fish every day, and if you need a new boat motor, you know, every year or whatever, that's it's really tough, you know, at ten cents a pound. Stuff like that for carp. It's it's a tough living, but once you do it, I mean you're you're stuck with it. So. <laughs> so tell me your your favorite thing about being out on the river every day. What brings you every day out there? Um, just you know being being out the outdoors is probably the biggest thing. Different you know different scenery every day different parts of the river every day that you fish and the river's never the same you know it changes daily I mean uh, it, the river can come up two feet overnight you know so it's pretty big changes with the river and stuff and that's what I like you know I don't like to you know going into a job and doing the same thing you know day after day <clears throat> 
So after so many years, do you feel like you have kind of a relationship with the river that you get you understand it? And right. Yep. I mean, there's you might think you don't understand it, but there's a lot of respect for the river because it could take your life in a matter of seconds and something. And have you ever seen that happen with commercial fishermen? I've I haven't seen it for myself, but I've heard of two guys, you know, around here within. Uh, you know, 30 miles of us that have lost their life due to it. And so what do you think, do you think that comes from losing respect for the river, or is it just... Just, yep, getting careless, you know, trying to take shortcuts of everything and go a little bit faster and stuff like that. You know, you just get careless of us doing it. You know, it's going to cost you. And so do you do you plan, I mean, you've been there your whole life. Is this something that you hope that your kids will carry on the tradition of? Yeah. Yep. And I think they will. You know, they they go with us daily. They're six and three. And they, they love the river and the boat and the different kinds of fish and stuff like that. So do you guys use the river for recreation as well as work? Yes. Yep. We uh, do a lot of. A lot of duck hunting in the fall and pole uh, line fishing, do, do quite a bit of that. And then uh, take the kids down to the down to the river, find a little beach, and let them swim around and play in the water. And they like they like to pick up different shells and stuff like that. They really get into all that stuff. So do you guys have any trouble with um, like recreators kind of starting to intrude into your fishing area? Yeah, the, any more of the bass fishing tournaments have really taken off. There's quite a few of them in a year around here. So in the summer months, you, you can't really fish right locally in town because of the bass boats. Because they will run your nets over and you know, cause a big problem you know, with all that stuff. Can you tell me what happens if your nets get run over and get caught up in a motor? Or? Um, yeah, you know, if your nets get run over... Those main lines get all chopped, you know, and they'll get wrapped up right around the motor, and then they'll take a knife, knife to them to cut them out, and you won't have a net left, totally destroyed. A three hundred dollar net, you know, totally garbage. And do you feel like the the people that are coming in kind of have like an entitlement, and they're they're kind of taking your space away? Yeah, the uh, well. Probably the one of the main things is the bass fishing, and then there's uh, there's guys from the bigger cities. They come up with their big their big cigar boats, I call them, and big party boats. Yeah. And they you know they throw a big wave. And there are not too many islands left around here anymore because of you know the barge traffic and and then the, those big boats you know. Get a hundred of those turned around here in town. Our islands aren't very big, and you know they, they wash them down to nothing. And so, do, do you believe that that makes it just every year it gets a little bit harder for you guys to make a living out there? Yep, I mean the river silts in, fills in really bad. So if you had a spot that's been good for five years that you can count on to go there and catch those fish. They might not be there next year because it's filled in so bad. All right. So tell me, like, a day in your life, Brooks, um, out on the river. What does that look like? What's that? What What does a day in your life look like on a day that you're going to go out on the river? When does it start and kind of what does your, how does your day unfold? Well, normally about 6.30, get started, and... Um, depending on what what kind of gear I'm raising, but it's most most time an all day ordeal. By the time you go raise your nets and, and go to the fish market to get rid of them, and, and then you know you go back down to wash your boat out and all that stuff. You're looking, you know, a good 12 hour day every day. So what keeps you doing it every day? Um, say being outdoors, being, you know, kind of your own ordeal, you know, uh, just mostly being
being outdoors and seeing different stuff and all the changes all the time. I mean, you, you don't get to see, you know, the weather change underneath the roof. You know, if you're working in a factory, you can't see good old sunshine every day or, you know, when it starts, you know, going from the sunshine to the crappy weather and stuff. <clears throat> and so was your, was your father a commercial fisherman? No, I actually, I grew up right around my valley and about a block away and always kind of walked down here and, and uh, helped him out here and there and, and then finally, you know, got to go along with him and uh, then I fished with his uncle, uh, Donnie Valley and he was, at that time, he was probably, the valleys were the biggest fishermen in Ferdishin around well, probably the 60 mile radius or better. All right. Well, I think I think we're good this time. So All right. so thank you so much. All right. Okay. Thank you. See you, Brooks. See you later. Bye.